So in this video, we're going to be looking at the Newfangled Audio Elevate Mastering Limiter plugin. And if anyone hasn't watched the Newfangled Audio Equivocate video that I did, I'll put it up in the info card up there. Please go and watch it because the first couple of minutes has some information about what critical bands are that you'll find useful for getting the best out of this plugin too. Okay, so before we listen to this thing, let's just go ahead and outline some of the main controls and functions because this plugin is quite complex and it has a number of different sections and if you're not aware of what this can do you can get yourself into a bit of a mess but once you get going with it it will become really intuitive okay so we can see all of the different sub modules in this plugin here we've got a filter section we've got a limiter EQ transient emphasis section and a clipper and now while we're selected on main parameters here, we're just getting the most important parameters from all of these different sections. And this allows us to very quickly shape the tone without having to go between all of these different submodules. Okay, so let's start off with filter bank. And anyone that has looked at the Equivocate plugin will recognize this. This is breaking the auditory spectrum down into 26 critical bands. So it's breaking it down into the different frequency bands like our ears do and that's this mel curve here but just like the equivocate if we wanted to reduce the number of bands and you know change that and move things around we can do as well and again just like equivocate i prefer to leave it on the full 26 bands and on this mel curve like our human auditory system does okay so basically the first drop of this plugin when the sound comes in it's splitting it down into a number of bands and from there it moves left to right through these different sections so after the signal has been split into these bands it goes into the limiter EQ section and this is where you can send more or less level into the limiter and then from there it goes into the transient section so this is how you can emphasize or de-emphasize the transients once it's gone through the limiter so because one of the problems with limiters and especially look ahead limiters is that they tend to soften the transients because they're responding very very quickly and this allows you to kind of reshape the transients in each of these bands so that the signal that's been limited and squashed doesn't lose some of the punch that you often get when you're using limiters and then finally, we've got the clipper section. So what you may have noticed at this point is that once it's been split into the bands, both the limiter and the transient emphasis sections are using the same bands. But if we go to the clipper here, we notice that we don't have a bunch of bands here. And if we kind of look at some of the parameters, there's no indication that they're in bands. And that's because they aren't. Okay. So really what's happening here is at the filter bank section here, it's being split up and at the end of this transient section it's been joined back together again and by the time it gets to the clipper it is back to being a normal stereo signal again okay so let's go ahead and let's go back to this main parameter page so we can look at the various different limiter settings in this bottom left section and just to the right of that we've got the most crucial controls for the transient emphasis section and then we've got the controls for the spectral clipper section great so that should give us enough knowledge to basically get used to how this thing might work and what its purpose is its purpose is to be a new age mastering limiter okay and to do things that conventional mastering limiters can't do by splitting up into a number of bands that match our auditory system okay so let's just cycle through some presets and all I want to do as I'm cycling through these is just flicking through these various different sub modules so you can see the different settings and the different types of sounds you can get out of this thing and one handy thing on this preset menu is we have this gain lock function so what that does is it allows all of the gain knobs so the gain here and output ceiling to remain the same and that should mean that basically the volume should remain at a fairly reasonable level and you're not going to get this huge volume disparity as I'm flicking through the presets which is going to make it easier to judge how the other controls are affecting the sound okay so we're going to start with it bypassed okay so this active button here is bypassing the whole plugin and this level match here is useful because if this is on when I'm taking it on and off 
between active and bypass, we're not going to get a level drop. And what it's actually doing is turning up the signal when it's in bypass to match how loud it is when it's turned on. So hopefully what you notice there as I was cycling through the different presets is that some of them were much punchier than others. Some of them had been driven harder but still retained that level of you know, aggression and thump that you typically lose when you're hitting a limiter hard. And this is really what sets this apart from other mastering limiters is that you have complete control about how much transient you retain. And that's something you don't often get with limiters. And to have that control on 26 different bands is unparalleled. Okay, so we're gonna start with this limiter EQ section. And I'm gonna leave it on the main parameters for now because these first three sliders here are perhaps the most important on the limiter EQ section. So all the way on the left here, we've got the limiter gain. And this is how much you're turning the input level up by at the start of the limiter section. And all the way on the right here, we've got the output ceiling. So this is the maximum level that the limiter will allow the signal to get on its output. So the more you turn up the input, the more it hits against this output ceiling and the more gain reduction that happens. So this is a brick wall limiter in the classic sense. And in the middle here, we've got the speed. So this is a combined attack and release curve. So the faster this is, the quicker it will not only kick in, but the faster it will also release. And the faster it is, the louder it will become overall, but it has the effect that pumping and breathing and other artifacts and other distortions might be clearly audible. So what people will often do is relax off this speed to get the desired result, okay? And we're gonna come to adaptive gain and adaptive speed a little bit later on, okay? So on any of these bands or any of these um, parameters, we can actually click this button inside the kind of brackets here and we can go ahead and turn this section on or off. So we're gonna leave these both off. We're gonna leave the limit again up here. And just so that you can hear what this is doing, we're gonna really exaggerate it. So I'm gonna set the gain high. I'm gonna set the output ceiling high as well and the speed fast. And what you should really here here is that it's going to be very crunchy and very loud So notice when I'm playing that and I'm turning the limiter gain up, we're getting more gain reduction on the master meter here. And 
as that's being turned up, it's hitting into that ceiling. Great. So now let's do that with the speed on its fastest because what you'll hear then is it actually distorting far earlier. Okay, so all we've done so far is use Elevate like you would a conventional mastering limiter. And without the adaptive gain and the adaptive speed turned on, this is actually like a single band limiter. Okay, but now let's go ahead and let's use the adaptive gain and the adaptive speed. Now, both of these are artificial intelligence algorithms that are going to fine tune the gain and the speed. So how this works is you turn it on and this gives you a kind of slider to tell you how much deviation each of these bands can have from one another. So if I'm setting this to six decibels, it means any of these 26 bands can deviate six dBs from this seven and a half dB level, okay? So that would mean that you can kind of have a gain of as low as one and a half or as you know loud as you know 13.5 on the other side okay so let's go ahead and let's listen to that and the idea being is that this adaptive gain is going to make it easier to hit into the limiter without that distortion because it's gonna uh, make sure that if the signal in a certain category in certain band is higher it's not gonna give it so much gain okay so theoretically the higher this is the more it's going to be tailoring to each band <laughs> So for me, when it's up at the top part of this, it's becoming much more three-dimensional and it just feels like it's breathing better still, even though it's technically getting louder. Okay, And we can do the same here for the adaptive speed. So what this is doing is, again, it's allowing each of these different bands to have slightly different attack and release characteristics. Now, rather than these all having a certain deviation, the adaptive speed here is slightly different so at naught percent here it's basically handling the same attack and release on every single band whereas if we kind of move this up it's basically allowing the speed to be more distinct between each of these different bands okay that's why it's a percentage rather than a decibel level and theoretically again though when we're on lower percentages or this kind of sliders all the way down it's going to be acting much more like a conventional limiter and when it's all the way up the attack and the releases and the kind of curve of the limiter is going to be a little bit more independent for each band Okay, so you could hear that kind of moving with the music a little bit better once it was kind of over 50% to 100%. And this is kind of the range that I usually leave these things at, is that just somewhere between 50 and 100% of the kind of sliders range seems to be a really good compromise. And I'll just fine tune it somewhere between that range most of the time. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, great. So that's feeling good. Now let's hear this with both of these taken off. So you can kind of hear it with and without its kind of artificial intelligence. <laughs> So for me, the change is that it suddenly feels like more vibrant, it feels less choked and less distorted overall. So we've got more volume, but without the drawbacks. Okay. And one final thing before we move on to the transient emphasis section, if we just click on limiter EQ here, is that not only do we get control of the limiter gain and the adaptive gain, but we also get to look at the gain per band here and we can fine tune this for every single band that we want. And this not only is gonna act on hitting the limiter harder per band, but it also will act as a kind of spectral shaper like an EQ would, which is why it's called limiter EQ. And we can draw the curve in just like we could with the equivocate. So if I wanted to um, have a little bit more of this mid range in, I can just kind of turn it up into the limiter and we can kind of listen to the effects of drawing a different curve. Okay, so what you can hear there is that we're getting kind of tonal shaping as well as being able to hit the limiter harder with this tool. And think about this as a final kind of uh, fine tuning step after you've done this stuff here, because this is working on every single band. Okay, so let's now go ahead and uh, I'm going to reset these gains and let's move on to the transient emphasis section. So that's these um, controls here. And what transient emphasis is doing is basically allowing you to emphasize the transient of any of these different bands. So we're going to turn off adaptive transient for now. And by doing this, we'll basically get a single band transient control here. Just like when we turned off these adaptive gains that we were ending up with a single band limiter. So let's just listen to this. So at its lowest setting, it will basically be doing nothing. It will be doing exactly how the limiter intends it to work. And as we turn this up, we're actually going to be allowing the transient to be emphasized more. So it will be putting back some of that transient that you would naturally lose from mastering limiting. Okay, so let's listen to that. We're going to start with it being clean and then we're going to turn it all the way up. Okay, so what you could hear there is as this number got bigger, the more punchy and the kind of more dancey it got, okay? And certainly because, you know, the kicks on that four on the floor on this song, you know, on every kind of crotchet or quarter note, you're definitely getting the feeling that you're being hit, you know, a little bit more by the kick drums when this is emphasized more. But let's go ahead and let's turn on adaptive transient so again this is basically working much like the adaptive speed here is that on these lower percentage of values the um, it's working more like a single band transient emphasis tool and on the higher percentages it's basically allowing each band to be more interdependent from each other okay <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so hopefully what you're hearing there is much like the adaptive speed and the adaptive gain. The artificial intelligence is doing such a great job that I'm almost always liking it best when it's in the kind of latter half of its range. So let's go ahead and let's go to its kind of sub-module here where we're going to have some extra fine-tuning control. And I really love this section because quite often when I'm mastering a track, I wish I had fine tuned control of a certain area where maybe the kick is poking through too much or maybe you've got a snare poking through too much and you want to de-emphasize that or maybe the symbols are very bright and you wish that you could kind of de-emphasize the transients on those and with this particular mastering limiter you can so let's just go ahead and listen to it and i want to get rid of some of that low end weight from the kick drum and i can kind of fine tune that by soloing these different bands and working out where I don't like it. So I'm bringing down that range about 100. Let's have a look at what's just above it. Maybe I can emphasize that range a bit more so that it kind of balances out. I actually think that the snare drum was quite powerful in that range. So maybe backing those two off will kind of suit the rest of the track. <laughs> So that's me softening the kick and the snare. Well, what if I wanted to go the other way? Well, we can kind of draw that in again. And by being greater than 100, we're going to emphasize those areas. <laughs> So you can really hear the kick and snare kind of driving into everything a bit harder. Okay, uh, in this case, I actually think it was pretty good where it was. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the clipper. And mastering engineers usually do two types of processing to transients. Now you've got the limiter, which will soften up those transients quite significantly and flatten them out. And that's why we've got the transient enhancer. But another thing that mastering engineers often like to do instead of limiting is they do what's called clipping. And quite often when you're transitioning from the analog domain to the digital domain, they will actually peak and clip those converters on purpose because it has a different type of character and a different type of sound and that's really what this clipper is designed to do so we've effectively got some spectral shaping with this limiter EQ we can then basically emphasize those transients once more to kind of put back what you'd lost from the limiting and then if you want to you can go ahead and use the clipper to soften those once more but it has a little bit of a different sound to it so by using these three different sub modules you can get a variety of different tones and dependent on how these are set you can get very different types of clipping effects whether that's a hard or a soft clipping effect so let's just turn the drive up okay and at the moment we can see it's quite a soft transition so it's transitioning from a more linear range here to a more kind of clipped and curved line in a very soft way whereas if i increase this notice that we've got a much bigger linear range here and a much harder knee at the end of it 
And what you'll find is, is that the harder this is, the more it will sound like kind of a more digital style distortion that's going to be very aggressive and very hard. And the lower this is, the more of this analog style of clipping sound. Okay. And now when people often use the words analog clipping or, uh, you know, digital clipping, most people use it in the way that, oh, digital clipping is bad and analog clipping is good and that's not really quite the case here and I just want to kind of illustrate that because sometimes when you've got the drive set right and the kind of how hard it is you can sometimes transition so that it's only really kind of clipping the kicks and the snares when it's just hard enough whereas if you've got some drive and it's softer you're often kind of clipping more than that okay so let's just have a listen to it and go from there Okay, so that for me is like a nice light drive that took the kick and the snare in, but not in the same way that the limiter did. It took it in without it kind of losing its impact, okay? And if we wanted to push that even harder, we can do. So let's take this from what is essentially more like a, a soft analog style clipping to something that is a little bit harder. <laughs> Okay, so that's much more aggressive, but let's pull it back and forward between soft and hard. Okay, so in this case, I much prefer it at a kind of softer clipping with not so much drive. So let's go ahead and let's go back to the main parameters here. And I'm just going to quickly turn off all of this clipping. I'm going to turn off all of the limiting and all of the transient emphasis. Okay, so when I was switching them on and off and bypassing it, we've still got the level match on. And what I was hearing is that when it was active and it was on, it wasn't getting any worse. It wasn't sounding loads more distorted and like the limiting we're doing was really detrimental. So if we now do this with the level match turned off, we'll actually see how much extra volume we're gaining from this processing. And I think you'll be quite shocked about how much we've made this louder. Yeah.
so I'm just going to tweak this a little bit further. I think like the kick drum is just kind of hitting into it a little bit too much. So I'm going to drag that back down and I might even bring these kind of 102 and 218 down a little bit. And by doing that, we might actually be able to just get a bit more gain out of the limiter here. Okay, so before we end this video, I'm going to just quickly run you through the different metering options here. So in the middle here, we can see our main kind of um, gain reduction meter display, and we can flick that into three of the modes. So we're going to go left to right. We're going to start with input output, and this is going to show you in a darker blue the input peak level. It's going to show you the output peak level in this lighter blue, and any time the input peak is above your ceiling here it's going to be shown in yellow so let's just have a look <laughs> So we can clearly see the disparity between the light and the dark blue, but we're not seeing a lot of yellow at the moment, and that's because the output ceiling is set at minus 0.1. If I brought this right down, let's bring it down to minus 1, which is the sort of level you'd have for most streaming platforms these days, and we're likely to see much more yellow. <laughs> Okay, great. So let's move to gain reduction. And at the moment, we're on spread waveform. So we're seeing the gain reduction here for each band. Okay. Whereas we can stack the waveforms and it will kind of show you the kind of um, combined. Okay. And let's just look at that. And we can see this as more of a bar graph as well. So we can see that the input level in a blue color, the output level in the yellow color, and we can see the gain reduction in the orange. <laughs> So we can see the compression and gain reduction happening from the top down and we can see the input and output levels from the bottom up there. And as well as this, we've got regular peak 
and RMS readings on the input and the output of this. So we can see the top bar being the peak and the bottom bar being the RMS. <laughs> And we see the overall gain reduction here as well. Okay, so there we have it. Please like and subscribe. And if you're using this plugin and liking it, please leave a comment. Tell me what you're liking it on, where you're using it. If you have anything novel that you're using it on that maybe it wasn't designed for, I'd love to hear from you.